So pyrophosphate arthropathy is nothing but it is a kind of arthropathy which happens because of the deposition of uh, calcium pyrophosphate. Uh, and here there are some three to three terms that we mainly use here. First one is the chondrocalcinosis in, win, in which the uh, calcium pyrophosphate deposition happens in the cartilage. Uh, this may not have arthropathy as such. Uh, this can uh, the, there is one more condition in my, by the deposition of calcium pyrophosphate that is called as the the pyrophosphate arthropathy in which we can see some erosive changes, some proliferative changes in the bone we can see uh, that is the arthropathy whereas the other term is the pseudo gout pseudo gout is a condition in, in which the patient is having pyrophosphate arthropathy that is the joint has involved because of the calcium pyrophosphate deposition now in this patient there will be some acute symptoms like that we see in the gout so that is the that is called as a pseudo gout syndrome so calcium pyrophosphate deposition can present in three forms that is it can be because as a chondrocalcinosis deposition of the calcium pyrophosphate in the fibro uh, fibrocartilaginous or hyaline cartilage or it can present as pyrophosphate arthropathy or it can present as a pseudo gout now the joint that are most commonly involved are the knee joint knee joint is the most common joint involved after that it is the or in the wrist it is the radiocarpal joint which are commonly involved in the hand it is the second and third metacarpal head are the common site of involvement now other than this uh, there will be involvement of uh, shoulder and uh, hip joint and when the axial skeleton involved it is mainly the c c1 and c2 vertebral bodies where there will be calcium uh, the deposition of calcium pyrophosphate around the dense we can see some uh, density which is deposited around it the main way in which it can present is as the deposition of the pyrophosphate along the cartilage it can be the the chondral uh, cartilage or the joint cartilage or it can be along the menisci uh, or any it can uh, deposit on any fibrocartilage or it can deposit or uh, even on uh, hyaline cartilage and rarely it can also have some deposition along the joint capsule or the synovium as a linear calcification uh, also it can present along with that the, the bony changes that we see is a classical hook like osteophytes from the metatarsal head is a classical uh, picture that we see uh, in the pyrophosphate uh, deposition in this image we can see that there is deposition of the calcium along this menisci which is a fibrocartilage and also we can see the deposition along the the joint cartilage uh, or a hyaline cartilage uh, we can see that linear deposition also in the second image you can see some osteophyte formation also erosions uh, in the middle of the patellofemoral joint and the classical involvement of the patellofemoral joint uh, again suggesting that the pyrophosphate uh, arthropathy now in this image you can again see that the hyaline cartilage showing uh, calcification also the fibro cartilage also showing that is the meniscus is also showing the calcification even in this image in the we can see some uh, intra meniscal signal suggesting that it is a uh, involvement of the meniscus in this in this image again we can see that there is a large uh, uh, cyst subchondral cyst which might uh, make us uh, think in terms of some tumor, lytic tumor, but then presence of the chondrocalcinosis here will help us uh, help us suggesting that it is a pyrophosphate uh, deposition. The same patient uh, on MRI showed that cystic changes that are present in the subchondral location. Similarly, even in this patient, there is a large subchondral lytic lesion, and the patient uh, this looks like a tumor, but it was. Uh, pyrophosphate uh, arthropathy now this is nothing but a nodular calcification seen within the hip joint uh, this will make us think in terms of various dds like intra articular chondroma, uh, chondroma or conglomerate synovial chondromatosis or even the nodular form of chondrocalcinosis and this turned this turned out to be a nodular form of uh, chondrocalcinosis in this image again you can see that there is a triangular fibrocartilaginous uh, calcification also there is involvement of the scaphoid and lunate there is destruction of the scaphoid and lunate with uh, with the protrusion of uh, uh, the capitate through it 
so this is uh, a classical of a slack deformity that is craft a scaffold lunate advanced collapse the same thing we can see even this image there is a triangular fibrocartilaginous calcification there is involvement of uh, uh, this uh, radio the radiocarpal joint involvement with some calcifications we can see also there is a uh, slight collapse of the the scaffold lunate collapse can be seen here now even in this patient uh, we can see that there is triangular fibrocartilaginous involvement there is involvement there is involvement of the radio scaphoid joint uh, and also there are some uh, calcification uh, elsewhere in the joint uh, in the same patient we can see that there is involvement of the the chondral calcification happening and soft tissue calcification happening around uh, suggesting of the pyrophosphate disease this is a classical hook costified that we are seeing from the head of the metatarsal uh, bone which is classical finding of uh, the pyrophosphate arthropathy the hook uh, shaped osteophytes from the metacarpal heads this image is showing the axial skeleton involvement we can see some calcification posterior to the dense also there is a cyst which is present in the anterior arch of the atlas and the ligamentum flavum calcification is seen here and also uh, there will be involvement of the intervertebral disc calcification is also seen uh, so this is again here we can see some intervertebral disc calcification uh, which is also a classical finding in the pyrophosphate arthropod